I'm going to talk to you the topic called understanding our spiritual poverty. Understanding our spiritual poverty. To be poor in spirit is to acknowledge honestly and with understanding our spiritual poverty. Indeed, our spiritual bankruptcy before God, we are sinners and on the strength of our lives deserve nothing but God's judgment. We have nothing to offer, nothing to, to plead, nothing with which to buy his favor, but upon his provision of our faith, coupled with repentance, he, he, har, he, he allows by his grace the blood of Jesus Christ shed for the sins of the world to cover our sins, justifying us and providing us with the access in his, to his presence. When we, we understand about our spiritual poverty, we don't have anything to offer to God. Except, the, except his grace. When we are fixed, we understand who we are. If you understand who you are, you rely uh, depend on, on God 100%. And it is his grace, God, to help you to deliver us from this demon called spiritual poverty. If you, you look at the story of David, David he understood how to go with God and how to work with God. So when you, you understand what, who you are, then you can make God's grace to work on you very well. When we look at David, I give example David because David was a man of God and he was a, a, a prophet, he was a, a priest, he was everything. And he won the, the, the battle. He never rose. He was composing songs. He was a present worship. And he was a husband with many wives. But God uses him. And he, because he understands how to pray, how to go to deal with the spiritual warfare. When you acknowledge yourself who you are, you make everything easy. Because you can't pretend that you are some, somebody and yet you are nothing. You can be rich but poor in the spirit. You can be rich but poor. You have nothing of God. But when you, are, you, when you understand who you are, then the, the blessings of God will come. When you, let's look at the book of, of, of Psalms 51, verse 1, 2, and 6, 12, and 14 to 15. The Bible says, uh, in, in Psalms 51, verse 1, 2, and we will go to 6 and 12, 6 to 12, then 14 to 15. The Bible says, Have mercy upon me, brought out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly, cleanse me from my sins, make me know to know wisdom, patch me with the herbs, make me to clean, make me to hear joy and gladness, hide your face from my sins. Great in me a clean heart, renew a standfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not make your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your generously spirit. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Open my lips, and my mouth shall so forth your praise. This is David, because when you understand your spiritual poverty, this is how you know. To be poor in spirit is to acknowledge honestly and with understanding our spiritual poverty. Now, David, he was praying to God, have mass upon me. Have, it is the mass of God that will deliver you. It is the mass of God that will deliver you. You have not done anything. You, you are not so special, but the mass of God will deliver you. When you understand who you are, when you understand your, 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 our spiritual poverty, all your spiritual poverty, when you understand the spiritual poverty, it, you can plead the blood of Jesus. Sometimes you don't understand this. Thus, 
gave it a person who could not consider as divinity, none nonetheless says of himself in a situation where he felt only God could deliver him. When you fail, it is a time that you know, you only you only know that it is only God can 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 deliver you, and that is what that's why David was praying like that. He was praying, "Have mercy upon me, have mercy, God deliver me, cleanse me from this spiritual poverty." Look at what he prayed, Psalms Psalms Psalms, Psalms fifty one, verse one and two, then six and twelve, and then fourteen and fifteen. He said. Have mass upon me, brought out my transgression, wash me thoroughly, cleanse me from my sins, make me no wisdom, part me with your herbs. So David, when he understood about this, he went to God to preach the mass of God. Look at what he says in Psalm 36, in Psalm 34, verse 6. The Bible says, David prayed, he said, this man, this poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all, of all his trouble. You know, when you understand, when you are understanding our poverty, when you understand poverty, spiritual poverty, that's how David was praying. David said this because it depends on God. He, he has to depend 100% to God. He didn't know what to do in the wilderness when he was the enemy was chasing him. He didn't have food in the, in the in the wilderness when he was fighting. Yeah, you can be in a situation like that, very difficult life, very uh, very difficult situation. You don't know where to turn to. You are sick. You have no job. You have no husband. Even you have no children. But you are so so so. It is time of very 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 difficult. So that's how David, when David was in the wilderness, was fighting, was, the enemy was chasing, the sorrow was chasing him. And he had some people in the, in the forest, in the war, no food, nothing to do. And then he said, what can I do? Let me pray. Let me ask God to have mercy and forgive us any sin that is bringing this disaster in us. The sins start bringing us. Let's repent and let me personally repent because I am the one who is leading these people. That's why he was praying. If you read the whole Psalms 51, you can see how David was praying because he understood about spiritual poverty. He, he, he went and relied on God. He depends on God everything. Everything he was doing because he, he said, I will praise you, God. I will thank you in the midst of troubles. I will depend on you all, all through because I know that God, you will never leave me. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. The Bible says that when, when, when he was praying like that, he said, this poor man cried. The Bible said, this poor man cried out and the Lord had him and he saved him out of his trouble. The Lord will save you out of all your troubles. The Lord will come and save you from poverty, from spiritual poverty, from every trouble that you are facing. When you depend on God, when you understand your spiritual poverty. But I am poor and in need, yet the Lord thinks about me. David was saying, I am, I am poor and in need, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You can be poor and in need, but remember God thinks about you. If you look at the book of Psalms, Psalms 40 verse 17, then that is what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. I'm poor, but I'm poor and need, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You, you are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. If God is thinking on someone, he has the attention of one. So God is thinking about somebody. He's thinking about you. God is thinking about your situation when you, are, you are, when you understand the spiritual poverty. When you understand your spiritual poverty, God is thinking about you. Because you only depend on him. You only rely on him. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. That Bible, the scripture says, Psalms 41, Psalms 40 verse 17. But I am poor and need, 
yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. If God is thinking on someone, he has the attention of the one with great power, wisdom, and love in all the universal. universal. The humble shall see this, and the humble will see this and be glad. And you who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. Psalm 69, Psalm 69, verse 33 to 33. Psalm 69, verse 32 to 33. The humble shall see this and the glad, and you have sick, and your heart shall live. For the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. That's what the Bible says. When you understood about the poverty, God under God, God, let's look at that, that scripture. Psalm 69, verse 32 to 33. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Our God understand you. When you also you acknowledge, when you understand spiritual poverty, you depend on God. You cry to God. Like David prayed. And he has God speedily God. I need you. I need your help. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much. The Bible says, The humble shall see this, and be glad your heart shall live that sweet God. For the, for the Lord heard the poor and despised not his prisoners. Let the heaven and the earth praise him, the seas and everything that moved therein. You see, this is what the word of God says. Thou, the humble shall see is and be glad, and you who seek God, your hearts shall live. For the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. The Lord hears the poor. You know, the Bible says, the, this man, the, this poor man cried, and the God delivered him from all his troubles. So God hears the poor. When you understand your spiritual poverty, God hears them. That's what the Bible says. One can be glad in a difficult circumstances because God hears the poor, and He deliver, and He deliver, and He will deliver. You can be very deep, difficult situation. But the Bible says, you, you are glad. You are glad in that position. The difficult the situation you had, but God will hear you. The, if you humble before the Lord, God will, surely will hear you and he will come to you. For he will deliver the need. He cries. Psalm 72, verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, For he will deliver the need when he cries, the poor also and him who has no help. He will spare the poor and need and will serve the soul of the need. The Lord will serve the soul of the need. When you, are, you, are, you understand your spiritual poverty, when you understand the, your spiritual poverty, the Lord will hear you because you will humble before him. This is what the Bible says in Psalm 72, verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, For he will deliver the need when he cries, the poor also, and, and in him who has no helper, he will spare the poor and the need, and he will serve the souls of the need. Remember what happened to, to Esther. Esther did not have a godfather. Esther did not have anybody. He, she was a poor and an oven. A poor woman and an oven. She was poor. She didn't know what to do. But because she knew who is her God is, she understand her spiritual poverty. So she humbled herself. She was good. She was doing everything of good. 
She trusted that one day God would deliver me. She hoped in God. She put her trust in God. She, she was praying and, and doing good and believing that God would deliver me. God would take away this poverty from me. Yeah? You, when, you are, when you are poor and poverty, you don't have to be bitter or be jealous or angry with people. Humble yourself. Cry to God. He, he understands and he has the poor. If you understand your spiritual poverty, if you understand that poverty is not killing so Esther, she understood her background and she had to pray and repent. In fact, she went even, there was a time when, they, when the enemy wanted to kill them. They went and pray and fasting. So if you humble yourself, you ask God to deliver you. You ask God to take away that, that powers of poverty from you because he has you. He delivers you in that situation where you are. When you are in difficulty, Paul says, give thanks to God all the time. All your circumstances, no matter the situation you are, just tell God, God, you know how, where I am. You know the situation I'm facing right now. But I thank you that you give me wisdom out of it. Remember, wisdom is the key of every problem you are solving. When you are starting crying, become bitter, cursing, you can't get what you are, you, you are going to get because you open the door for the devil. When you humble yourself and, and, and seek him, he will come for you. Because he hears you. He hears your situation. He hears. He, God hears the poor. When you are in that difficult situation, he will come to you. Beyond hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you. Beyond the deliverance, there, there is a first promise, mercy, in judgment, and perhaps salvation to the poor in the spirit. No wonder Jesus called them blessed. Let's look in Psalms, Psalms 107, verse 41. It's a psalm of thanksgiving, yet he set the poor on high for far affliction and make their family like a flock. God will make sure that in the time the poor in spirit will receive extortion, their family too receive blessings. Yes, God knows that scripture is so powerful. The scripture of Psalms 107 verse 41 is a psalms of thanksgiving, yet he set the poor on high. God set the poor on high. Look at where, 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 where Joseph was. Joseph was in prison. He was prison being locked there because he didn't know what to do. He was poor and, and hopeless. But he, he, he knew that he would do well and, do, and trust his God. And the Lord lifted him high. God can lift a poor person high. Everybody would say, this person used to be very poor, but nowadays is high. People go there and kneel down before the person. Because God hears them. God hears you, the, the situation you have. This scripture, is, is, you meditate upon them. Look at this scripture. If you are struggling with, with, with the poverty, with the financial problem, you are not alone. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will make you so high. And everybody will say, is this the person who used beggars? Look at that, the beggar, the Patmayo, son of Demayo. The beggar man, a poor man, who didn't have anything to, to have, to eat, even to wear in his body. But Jesus, when Jesus met him, the man in poverty went away completely from his life. So when you understand your spiritual poverty, you have to humble yourself and seek the face of God and repent and, and, and pray. The Lord hears. Even your family, even your family makes them the flocks. Even your family will be blessed because of you. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Two Psalms reveals the internal destiny of the poor. Look at Psalms 113, verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. He raised the poor out of the dust and lifted the neat out of the ash hub, that he may sit him with princes, 
with the prince of his people. That's how God will lift you up. This is very powerful scripture. When you understand your spiritual poverty, the Lord will lift you up. The Lord consider you. He will make you to eat with the presidents. He will make you to eat with the queens and the president and prime ministers of the world. He will make you to sit with the, with the ministers, with the wealthy people. Because he understands you. I, I, I prepare a lot of Psalms because the book of Psalms teaches how to win the battle, how to deal with the spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Psalms 132, verse 13 and 17. The Bible says, For the Lord has, has chosen Zion. He has desired, desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with, with bread. I will also clothe her priest with salvation. And the saints shall Sorry, 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 around for joy. They will, there will I make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. In this Psalms, salvation and glory are divinely promised and time and ultimate in the blessings. You can see what Psalms 132, verse, verse 13 to 17 says For the Lord has chosen Zion, the Lord has chosen you. Zion is people. He has desired it for his habitation. He is, he, is, he, is, he, is, he is my resting place forever. Here, the Lord has chosen you. You didn't choose yourself. God has put you there. God, God is the one who put you in that family. God is the one who chose you to be there in that family. You didn't put yourself there. So God has chosen you. You can see this scripture, what he said. I will satisfy her poor with the bread. God will satisfy you. I will satisfy her poor with the bread. God will satisfy you. Once you understand the spirit of poverty, God will, God will satisfy you. God will satisfy your family. God will satisfy your, you. That's why we pray for people who ask for financial breakthrough. Some people, they say, I have financial difficulty. Please pray for me. Because God Almighty will satisfy you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will satisfy you because it, he has the, the poor. But when you are bitter, you are, you, you are so bitter, you are very angry, you are complaining, you are jealousy, you have enemies. You feel like you can have this, is, this can be yours. Then you open doors for the enemy to attack. But when you understand your spiritual poverty, when you understand who you are, then the Lord will bless you. The Lord hears everything. You, you, you can pray these prayers of David was praying. God will come and, and provide provision. Paul says, Paul was another one. When he was going to the church, some churches was not able to assist him, was not able to provide for him. But when he went to the to the to the to the to the, to the, to the other church, he got uh, he got blessed. Philippians, and then he prayed for them. My God will meet your needs according to the riches and the glory. When you understand your spiritual poverty, they, uh, Paul did not worry. Because he understood that wherever blessing he will he will he will release a blessing to him, because God hears everything that you are doing when you are accepted. When you are accepting who you are, God will bless you. But when you don't accept, you just complain. You you feel bitter. You 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 feel so bad. Especially you get jealousy. You are greedy. When you see somebody with something, you are greedy. Yeah. I was talking with somebody that God has blessed me with something. I was I, I didn't know that the person would feel bad. That person when I mentioned something, she kept quiet. She didn't mention, she didn't say anything. She changed her face and I said, Why? Why? Trust God will help you. God will deliver you. God will give you. God is able to, to bless you. So you cannot kill yourself. Don't think that God is a liar. 
When you are like that, the devil will put you in a fix. You will never, 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 never see anything good. Because you are greedy, you are a charity, you don't like people's things. When you see somebody is blessed, you feel bad, you say, what about me? Yeah, you ask is coming when you humble yourself, you repent, you cry. You remember the Bible says, This poor man cried, and God answered him all, all his trouble, all your financial trouble, your difficulty, problem you are, you are facing. The God Almighty will answer you, God will visit you because He will provide. He's a provider, it's our God is a provider. You are only depending on God 100%. You have no other way. Yeah, you have no aunt, you have no uncle, you have no father to who can give you money. Some people they are lucky, they have their fathers, they have their mothers who are rich when they pass, they leave they left behind some wealthy, some money for their children. You you are you are you are your parents were poor, poor, poor. So you have nothing. Now you acknowledge, thank God that you know God. Thank God you are saved. Thank God your parents maybe they didn't say they are not saved. Even if your forefather died without salvation, but you, you know. So you have to, to understand your spiritual poverty. You accept yourself the way you are. Then you will see the hand of God coming. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 some, somewhere, it says that my hand is not short that I cannot save you. My hand is not so short that cannot cannot save you or cannot help you. The hand of God is not short. When the Bible is saying that the poor God can make them to sit on the princess and, and princess, prince and princess, God is all my God. God is, is, is God of host. He it doesn't, it doesn't have any favorism. God is looking humble people who would appreciate with the little they have, who would thank him and give you, give him thanks, thank, thanks and giving, who would acknowledge, he said, God, thank you the way I am. I am appreciating, I know you think about me. Remember the scripture is saying, God is thinking about you. God is thinking about you. The God is thinking about you, being a poor, be the situation you are. God himself is thinking about that. Don't think that God does not care about you. He cares. He's thinking and is watching how far you, what you are doing about yourself. So you remove that spirit of greed and cherish in your, in your life. Then you will see the salvation of, of Jesus. You will see the salvation of God. That's why David was praying from Psalms 51. He repented. He asked God to forgive if there is anything that opened doors for poverty. If there is anything that is opening doors for, the, that, for that situation you are. If something is, has happened that, that has, has, has come in the situation you are. You say God. I know I am in this situation, very difficult situation. I don't know what to do, but God, I thank you. Give me wisdom. How should I come out of this problem? How do I come? Look for wisdom. The wisdom is, is, is what you are looking for. You are, yes, you have nothing. You don't have anything. You don't, you have nothing, completely nothing. In your fridge, or you don't have even a fridge. You have nothing in the house. But depend on God 100%. God will provide the helper. It's your helper. It's your divine helper. You may, you, know, you may not have help, physical help. You may not have your uncle, your sister, anyone else. But God will come to you because he knows you. He knows you and he will do everything to provide for you. When the children of, of Israel, we, they were in the, in the wilderness, they didn't have water, they didn't have food. And they were looking at Moses, saying, Moses, why did you bring us this way? And this poor man, Moses, he didn't know what to do, but he was depending on God. He was depending on God 100%. Then he said, God, you are God. And God provided manna from heaven, and the children of God, the children of Israel were able to eat. And in the rock, in the rock, in the rock, where there's, in the, in the desert, where nothing. And God made water come from the, the from the rock and the people were drinking that water god is an awesome god god is the one that you will depend on him if you rely on god your life will never be the same again hallelujah praise be the name of jesus lord i want to thank you thank you jesus hallelujah praise be the name of jesus christ i am going to pray for you i'm going to pray to destroy Destroy the altar of poverty. 
to destroy the powers that is affecting people from poverty. I am praying that God will deliver you. Any power that is inviting poverty in you, that, that, that cannot let you go, shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my God and my Father, I am bringing your people into your hand, God. I pray that God, every altar of poverty in your place of birth, working against your prosperity, working against you, I pray that God Almighty will burn them to ashes in Jesus' name. Activate as poverty. That does not want you to go. Let them burn to ashes in Jesus' name. Because God is thinking about you. God is, is thinking and God is able. But the enemy, who is, uh, is your great enemy, is not happy. Therefore, I pray that every satanic priest ministering against your prosperity in, in any evil altar, I command them to die by fire in Jesus' name. Yes. God Almighty will provide you a way where it seems to be way in the name of Jesus. Any power that is holding you, any, any spiritual dark, hallelujah. Yes. Yes, I was writing the prayer point this morning. I pray that God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray every arrows of darkness fires into your star. I command them to burn to ashes in Jesus' name. The, the arrows of darkness covering your crowd that you do not get the blessings of God make you to make mistakes. Let that crowd to be removed in Jesus' name. I pray every strength and power of every environmental order upon your life, whether in Jesus' name, whether in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God Every strength and the power of every environmental altar upon your life, I command them to weather in the name of Jesus Christ. Environmental strength, there, there's some powers that is, that is around your environmental power. They have said that no one will be rich or no one will be blessed in this environment. environment. Let that environment to cut fire and burn to ashes in Jesus' name. The Lord Almighty, the promise of God, he has that he hears the poor. So the enemy is opposite. The enemy will, make, will want to make, to, 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 to make you feel that God does not hear you. That's a lie. That's why I'm praying like that. God hears and thinks about the poor. He's thinking about the poor people. And it's his power to make you wealthy. Not the power of the devil. There's no condition if God wants to make you wealthy. There's no condition of that of, 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 of God to, to change. God thinks about you. When you, you. when you understand yourself, when you acknowledge him, when you think you thank him and you, you understand who you are. And here is the enemy who comes to, to steal from you, to lie on you. I pray that God Almighty, today I prophesy to you. The Lord will raise up altar of continuous prosperity upon your destiny, upon your life, upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord Almighty will raise up an altar of continual, continuous prosperity upon your destiny, upon your life, upon your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will make a standard of the Holy Spirit to bring blessings upon you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, praise be the name of Jesus. My God, my Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you, God, I thank you. My God, I pray that God Almighty, every stronghold of mental and spiritual poverty in your life, be uprooted by fire. I command them to be uprooted in Jesus' name. Every stronghold of mental and spiritual poverty in your life, spiritual poverty in your life, I am, I am, I am, I am, I'm uprooting them in Jesus' name. Be uprooted by fire. Strong man of mental and spiritual poverty in your life. Be uprooted. Be uprooted by fire. I am uprooting them in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any covenant in your life that is strengthening the stronghold of poverty, break. There are some strongholds that make you 
that strengthening poverty because you 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 claim you you say i am poor i i, I nobody is helping me you start talking you start uh, cursing yourself you 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 dispect yourself you feel like you are nothing that is not acceptable remember god thinks about the poor so those powers strengthening the the, the, the enemy to open to us i destroy them i pray that god God Almighty will bless you and God will provide, will provide for you in the name of Jesus. Because it is, it is the powers of God to make you wealthy. So don't call your name. Don't, don't, don't cry. Don't feel that you are nothing. Don't, don't feel that, that you, you are, because, you're poor, because you are poor, that's what is happening to you. Or you cannot do anything. God thinks about you. God loves you so much. You, you are somebody God cares about you than anyone else. You can see how many scriptures God talk about the, the poor. How he loves them. How he think about them. How he bless them. The Lord will come before you and lift up a standard of the Holy Spirit to fight the enemy that is fighting against you. That's why God tells the, the, the rich people, give them. You have more. Give them because you have to. Yes, Lord, my Father. I pray that, oh God, create opportunities for, you, for prosperity in your life today. Let God create opportunities of prosperity today in Jesus' name. Lord, because he has said, let God create opportunity of, 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 of prosperity in the name of Jesus. You have to destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, my Father, I pray the blood of Jesus over your people. I thank you, Lord, that God, you will deliver your people from the powers of poverty to understand that God, you love them, you take care of them, the way they are, when they understand themselves, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, and I give you all the glory. My Heavenly Father, I bless your name. I give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Go to the scripture that I have given to you. Read by yourself. Take your Bible and read them. God will help you. God will deliver you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to stay where you are. The Lord loves you. The Lord takes things about you. Things God himself is thinking about you. That's what the scripture says. Remember what David said. This poor man prayed. Uh, cried and God had him and, and saved him from all his trouble. The Lord is going to deliver you. The Lord is going to save you from all the troubles you are facing. If you are facing any trouble, case court, cause, uh, court case, papers, immigration papers, jobs, children, sickness, any trouble, any problem that you are sick, you are, you are, you are traveling you the lord will deliver them all what you are facing today the lord almighty will deliver you all when you cry to him when you call upon him you are accepting what you are if the problem has come you know that this problem you have it say tell, tell god god i thank you for this problem but give me a solution give me wisdom how i can handle it how i can deal with it. lord provide me a divine helper God will divide you, will give you a divine helper. God will come to you. Instead of worrying, crying, become bitter, cherished, envious, you have to ask God, 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 these things has come to me. I know, Lord, I can't do anything, but it is you. You are my help, my defend, my everything. When David was in the wilderness with the people and some people were, were chasing him, he was with the army, his army, and the other army from the other side were chasing him to kill him. In the wilderness, he didn't have food, he didn't have anything to do, but he cried to God. Look at Elijah, the man who was using fire. He was learning, because when a woman told him that I'm going to kill you, Elijah says, I'm not going to wait for that woman to come and kill me. Let me learn for myself. He went and hid. He, where he was hiding, he didn't have food. He didn't have anything. But the Lord, he understood him. He, he provided food for him. So you can be in a situation for your life. 
but God thinks about you. And the Lord, the Lord called Elijah and asked him, Elijah, what are you doing there? Come out. You are a man with, who used to have fire. Now where is your fire? Come out. Because when, when the woman Jezebel sent a message to tell Elijah, I am going to kill you. Wait for me. I'm coming. And for sure that woman was going to kill, it, kill him. So Elijah, he didn't even remember that he had the fire. He didn't remember that. Sometimes when you are fixed with a problem, you don't remember anything. You become powerless because the enemy will strike you to, to make you forget everything. But don't worry. Call upon God. He takes, he thinks about you. You might be fixed until you get confused. You don't know what to do. What, the same thing what happened to Elijah. Elijah, a prophet, a man of God. When the woman said that he's going to kill him, kill him Elijah didn't wait. Elijah did not say that I will call fire to kill that woman. He has to run for his life. That is the same thing that happens to everybody. Sometimes something happened to you. You don't know what to do. You got confused. But think about God. Elisha, God had to provide for him. God sent a, a bad, loving bad to cut food. An angel of God was cutting food to Elijah. Hot meat, cooked, very warm, and Elijah was eating. So, Remember that our God thinks about you. When you understand who you are, when you understand spiritual poverty, the Lord will provide you. The Lord will come to you. Therefore, people of God, I pray that I bind and cast out every negative word enforcing poverty into your life. Any, any negative word that is enforcing poverty into your life. I destroy them. I pray that God Almighty would deliver you in Jesus' name. You will start telling yourself good words. You will start telling God that God, I depend on you. I am your child. I am your child because God hears you. My God and my Father, I thank you. Spirit of stigness, I command you to disappear. Disappear in the name of Jesus. Spirit of stinginess, when people stink, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to, what, what, what they, they are doing. Let that stinkiness disappear completely from your life in Jesus' name. My God, I thank you, Lord. I bless your name, Jesus. I give you all the glory, my God and my Father. Yes, Lord, thank you, my Father. There's these prayers that we, we do pray all the time. You know, when God blesses you, then you, you squander the money. You don't know how to use that money. You, 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 that's why you need to pray the prayers that where other people are spending money, I refuse to spend boldly face in the name of Jesus. So when God blesses you, you don't have to misuse your squander it and misuse it. You know these blessings is God, it's God's. So you have to take care. You don't spend. You don't go to nightclub. You don't go to the pub. You don't go to fund the demons. You don't go to fund the satanic bands. When God blesses you, you will, you will give your tithes and offering to the church. You will support the work of God. Not to fund satanic bank. Not to go and buy things of, of the devil. You fund the devil. Then, then the blessings will not be in you. It will run away. Because God has blessed you. This money is a holy money. Whereby you need to use it in a proper way. In a holy way. You cannot go and fund the devil. You go and buy that the money God has blessed you. The, the, the demonic stuff. You cannot do that. Give that money to the to the to the need. Bless the, the people of God. Bless the, the, the church. Go and give your tithes and offering. Rather than taking the money. Some people they forget that it is it is their money so they can go and buy things that it's not glorifying God. God my Father, I thank you. I bless your name. I give you all the glory. I have to stop here. Thank you, fell much. God bless you. God bless you and have a wonderful time. Go and study those scriptures. View these videos. It will deliver you and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Remember to go to our website. www.overcomersdhministries.blogspot.ca 
Also, you can call us, you can go to our website, all the contacts are there. Remember, if this ministry is blessing you, remember to donate to our ministry. An amount, I'm not asking you to donate what you don't have. God will bless you and see you through. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. This is your host, Prophetess Christine Isiki, saying bye-bye to you. God bless you. See you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. And meanwhile, I wish you mothers happy, happy Mother's Day. Tomorrow we are celebrating Mother's Day. Therefore, I wish you all mothers happy, happy Mother's Day. Tomorrow I'm going to have other subject talking about mothers. So God bless you so much. See you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.